Hello, everyone. Welcome and to the Esri GeoDev webinar series. About three years ago, we started this series as a way to continue engaging in developer-related topics and discussions in between Dev Summits. Speaking of which, we have our next Developer Summit coming up March 9th through 11th. We have a lot of new topics, advanced features, and additional functionality to share with you over the coming months, so be sure to stay connected with us through our GeoDev webinar series page on go.esri.com slash geodev or any of our social media accounts at Esri Geodev. We would love to have conversations like these taking place throughout the year so that when we do meet at one of these Dev Summit conferences, it will be as though we never stopped. We hope you get as much or more out of this webinar than you anticipated. Now, we would like to introduce you to today's webinar, What's New in ArcGIS API for Python? Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. We've taken a screenshot of an example of the attendee interface. You should see something that looks like this on your own computer desktop in the upper right corner. You're listening in using your computer's speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the phone, just select Use Telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenters by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them during the Q&A at the end of today's presentation. I would now like to introduce you to one of our presenters, Divyansh Jha. Divyansh, let's get started. Thank you, Amy. Hi, everyone. I'm Divyansh Jha, and I'm working as a data scientist at SRI's New Delhi R&D Center. I'm very excited to talk about the latest developments in ArcGIS API for Python. ArcGIS API for Python consists of ArcGIS.learn module, which is the heart of all the AI cap capabilities that are available in the ArcGIS ecosystem. It is tightly integrated with ArcGIS and provides end-to-end -end support from export till deployment. ArcGIS.learn module consists of several types of models, imagery models, models for three In this, we assign a single label to a image or a feature. On the right, you can see that we have assigned either damaged or undamaged label to a building after an unfortunate natural disaster. This can also be used to classify swimming pools to be clean or to be clean or green for disease control authorities. One more use case for multi is for multi-label support where each feature can be given multiple labels. For example, a, a scene of a feature which can contain both forest and uh, a, water, a water body. So that support has also been recently added to ArcGIS.learn. The next and a very important model or task is object detection. For this task, we have four types of model, the single shot detector, retina net, YOLO, and faster RCNN. It can be used for a variety of tasks, from detecting swimming pools in satellite imagery to detecting shipwrecks in bath bathymetric data. We can also use these models to detect pavement cracks in videos and, and use that video and map out these cracks in a dashboard. And the use cases are limitless, like detecting trees, cars, airplanes, and whatnot. We have another very important task that is pixel classification, where the task is to assign 
each pixel of the image a label. For example, in land cover classification, where each pixel belongs to one of the classes, land cover classes that we have, either green lands, roads, buildings, etc. For this task, we have three types of model: uh, unit classifier, PSP net classifier, and deep lab. We've recently added the point print architecture support, which is very helpful in improving the accuracy when the model is predicting near the edges. And this this point print architecture can be used to improve building footprints in pixel classification. And just to let you know, the state of the art road detection algorithms are also based on pixel classification. Next is instance segmentation. It is a precise form of object detection where we not only detect objects, but also detect its precise boundaries. And this is done by the very famous mask RCNN model. This is very helpful in the cases where we, we have very closely packed buildings and we need to identify them separately. If it were a pixel classification problem, they all would have been labeled a single class. But mask CNN enables us to detect the different instances of buildings. And there are several use cases like generating 3D roof and extracting building footprints and sinkholes, etc. Now we also have image enhancement models. In this, we have the super resolution a class in ArcGIS Learn, which can be used to train a model to increase the resolution of the imagery that we have. So the imagery on the top that you are seeing is the low resolution imagery, and the part of the same image is the high resolution ver version of it, which has been predicted by the super resolution model. It is extremely helpful as it helps us to go beyond the capability of the sensor and helps improve image interpretability. Image translation is another very important model as it can translate images from one domain into another. For this, we have added pix to pix and cycle GAN model. Both of them are able to translate the domain into one another. The cycle gen model is, is a little bit powerful as it can go from domain A to domain B and back from domain B to domain A. They're extremely useful in several use cases, like the one in this video, where we can directly go from imagery to this map. Uh, and this has been directly predict, predicted by the models. These two models are based on the latest and very popular generative adversarial networks, which are very famous for generative modeling. Next, we have the demo for pix to pix So we will use this task of converting this DSM imagery into RGB, NAVE imagery. This is a very challenging problem in deep learning because the model has to learn how to add color to this single band DSM imagery and make it look real. This is very helpful in creating automatic base maps for various regions. Now let's switch back to a notebook which will help us do this task. The first thing that we need to do is to export the training data. We need the data in this specific format where the first folder will contain the image chips from DSM imagery and the second folder will contain image chips from RGB NAPE imagery. We will use the export trading data for deep learning tool and we will set the metadata format to export tiles. This is because we need to export only image chips without any labels. We will have to run this tool twice, once with the DSM imagery and second with an RGB NAPE imagery. Once we have got the data, we will import the relevant functions and classes that we need. In our case, we will import pix to pix class. We will call the prepare data function with the data path and data set type equal to pix to pix. 
and we can call data dot show batch to see how the data looks like. As you can see, the model has to convert the single band DSM imagery into this three band NAEP imagery. Now we will instantiate the pix to pix model and we will find the learning rate. Once we have got a good learning rate, we will call model.fit. As you can see, the validation loss is going down. Now we will call model.show results to see how the results are. As you can see, the model is doing a fairly good job in converting these uh, single band imageries to uh, three band imageries and it is able to color it well quite realistically. Now we will, if we are happy with the results, we can save this model. We can use the classify pixels using deep learning tool to use the saved model in this path to inference on our area of interest. Now let's head back to pro and look at how the inferenced results look like. Here is our NDS ambassador and in the interest of time, I have already inferenced on this data. So these are the uh, predictions from our imagery. Yeah, so these are the results from our imagery. As you can see, the model is able to convert this DSM imagery to RGB and is doing a fairly good job in doing that. So this is how we can use pix to pix model to convert a DSM imagery into RGB. After the newly added pix to pix and cycle GAN, we have also added the edge detection models like BDCN and HD. They are available in BDCN edge detector and HD edge detector class respectively. These models are also pixel classification models, but they are highly specialized to detect boundaries. And these are very helpful in detecting buildings and agricultural farms parcels. Next, we have added multitask road extractor, which is a state of the art road extractor model. It uses the angle information inside the roads to train and thus it is able to predict highly accurate roads when trained properly. Next, we have also added support for change detection. Specifically, persistent change detection. Persistent change is the change in our features of interest because if we take images from two different timelines, there's going to be a lot of changes like in roads or maybe some other trees, ground, but we are interested in our object of interest, which is buildings. So if we look in here, only change in buildings has been detected and everything else is ignored. This is persistent change detection and it is based on the state of the art, very recently proposed model called STANET. Let me show you the demo of change detection. I will pull up this notebook which shows how to use this change detector model to perform change detection workflow for det detecting change in building footprints. I will pass in the data path. The data path contains three types of folder, images before, images after, and labels. And when I pass this path, I get a data object. I can use this data object to see batch of my data. As you can see, it can, the labels contains the building footprints for only change to build buildings. Using this data object, I can instantiate my change detector model and I can find a learning rate. Now I will train the model for 20 epochs. As you can see, the loss is going down. To see the result, I can call the show results method as we do in all ArcGIS learn models and the result seems to be pretty good. I can use the predict method to predict on local, local rasters that I have. As you can see, 
the model has done a fairly good job in detecting buildings which have newly come up uh, in later in the time period we have completed our change detection workflow but now we want to share it and one of the best way to share something is using a dashboard i will use the recently added dashboard class in the arcgis api for python to create my dashboards automatically i will import the relevant maps that are required and i will instantiate them with the web map class and its height i will use an indicator which will show the total built up shape area and i will use some text to show uh, for highlighting purposes i will sync the map so that if i move map in one direction uh, if i move it one map it also moves the other one and now i will set up the dashboard i have already published this map and let's see how it looks like as you can see the area is here and all the labels that i added are also present the map is in sync and the newly come up buildings are showing up in my dashboard and the area also changes as soon as i zoom in or zoom out this is how we can use arcgis api for python to create dashboards automatically after change detection we have also added the image captioning model which generates a textual description for a given image it can be found in the image captioner class in the arcgis.learn module it is very helpful in enhancing the feature layer and for accessibility purposes so here is a feature for which our model has given a prediction it says that many storage tanks are near a road which is quite accurate and towards the very right it says many buildings are in two sides of a railway station the model is able to identify the railway station and also that the two their buildings in sides of it another use case is when you've got this paper maps we want to scan them we want to geo reference them and we want to put them on a map which is currently a tedious task to do but using the scan map digitizer class in arcgis.learn we can even automate them we can find the exact geo locations of these maps on the world map and we can plot them very nicely as shown in the picture on the bottom right now we will see how deep learning is applied to 3d tabular and time series data in 3d deep learning we have added point cnn which is a point cloud classification model it classifies each point belonging to one of the classes as you can see it has done a very nice job in segmenting these wires all around the city and as well as the poles here it has done a great job in segmenting buildings and ground and classifying point clouds is of very high importance and is in very high demand we often associate deep learning to be applied to mostly on imagery and natural language or maybe 3d but deep learning is very effective in uh, tabular data as well we've added fully connected network ml model and time series model to arcgis.learn which are which can be used for dengue fever prediction or time series analysis this ml model class is very versatile as it can accept many types of scikit learn model that that are available so arcgis learn provides the very neat api to train your models and it can be any type of data any type of model and this api stays the same as you must have seen in a couple of demos that i showed so why use arcgis because it is very tightly integrated in the complete arcgis ecosystem it has this 
simple and consistent API. And we have around 30 models in the API which you can use for different types of tasks. Now coming to the pre-trained Geo AI models. Not everyone is a data scientist or Python programmer. And to really democratize our AI offerings to all of our users, we have provided ready to use models which are pre-trained or hu on huge volumes of data. So the first of the few models that are present is the are the building footprint model, land cover classification, tree point classification, windows and door classification. In the building footprint model, we trained it on USA building footprints and and it is giving amazing results on a on a variety of locations. As you can see, this is a location in Sweden and it is giving a very nice results on here. This is Palm Island in Dubai. And here also the models performing very decently. We also have the tree point classification model, which is trained to segment tree in point cloud data sets. And this model is also performs very, very well on a variety of geographies. This model was even used to create the 3D base map solution. Starting from draw point clouds, we first segment the point clouds into trees, buildings, and grounds. This is where a lot of deep learning would stop. But using the tools in ArcGIS, we convert these segmented 3D point clouds into multi-patches and classify the different species of trees using their area, surface area, and all, all that. After doing all the post-processing, this is how our end results look like. Now my colleague Akhil will show how to use deep learning for unstructured text data. Over to you, Akhil. Hi, everyone. My name is Akhil Negi, and I am a data scientist at S3's New Delhi R&D Center. I am also a developer on ArcGIS Python API team. Today, I will be talking about handling unstructured text data in ArcGIS API for, for Python uh, version 1.8.3. Let's look at uh, the uh, details of up updates and new additions made to the uh, 1.8.3 release of the API. So uh, we have uh, made some updates to the named entity recognition model. Uh, we have added a transformer backend. Uh, earlier, it, the model only used to support spacey backend. Uh, apart from that update, we have uh, added text classifier, uh, sequence sequence model, and we have also added few inference only models which uh, do not need to be trained and can be used out of the box. Uh, now uh, I will go a little deeper to these models uh, one by one. So first let's uh, take a look at named entity recognition. Uh, with Python API version 1.8.3 uh, the entity recognizer has been updated to support uh, transformer based architectures uh, in addition to the already supported spacey architecture. Uh, here I will talk about how to uh, set transformer as the uh, backbone for entity recognizer model. And uh, I'll also first talk about the differences between the spacey and the entity recognizer uh, and the uh, transformer based entity recognizer. So the first major difference is that the spacey model is uh, pretty small. It occupies somewhere around 4 MB to 6 MB space on the disk, whereas the transformer model, based on its architecture, can occupy somewhere around 40 uh, megabytes to a few gigabytes space on the disk. So the transformer models can uh, get really huge. Uh, the other major difference is that uh, the spacey model has limited support for multilingual data. Uh, whereas uh, transformer architectures have a lot of pre-trained models that have been trained on a large multilingual text corpus. 
so uh, for performing entity recognition on multilingual data uh, transformer uh, backends can be used uh, now uh, let's look at how to uh, make uh, the backbone selection uh, so in order to see the available supported backbones uh, on the entity recognizer class uh, you can call supported backbones and it will list all the supported backbones the first one is spacey uh, and the rest all are uh, transformer based backbones uh, once we have uh, chosen uh, the backbone then we can call available backbone models uh, to see what all uh, pre-trained models are available for that particular backbone and once we have uh, chosen uh, which pre-trained model to use we can uh, create the entity recognizer model uh, by passing the data object and the uh, backbone uh, rest of the training and inferencing workflow uh, is exactly same as it was before and uh, here is a sample notebook uh, that uh, shows the workflow for the complete workflow for name entity recognition at this url uh, with that uh, it sums up the updates that have been made to the uh, ner model uh, now uh, let's head back to the presentation uh, the next model on the list is uh, that has been added to uh, newly added to this release is text classifier uh, let's jump to a notebook to see how this model can be used. Uh, first, let's talk about uh, what is text classification. So, uh, text classification is uh, a task where we categorize input text into various classes. Uh, one example of text classification is uh, classifying emails into spam versus non spam categories. And uh, there are uh, different types of classifications and ArcGIS Learn uh, text classifier supports uh, two different classifications. Uh, the first one is multi-class single label text classification. The other one is multi-class multi-label classification. So multi-class uh, single label classification means that uh, uh, one input text can only belong to one category. Whereas in multi-class multi-label, one input text can belong to multiple categories. Uh, now let's look at the input data formats supported for label data. Uh, this model supports comma separated values and tab separated values as input. And for multi-class single label, uh, this is the sample format. Here we have one input text column and one category column. Here address is our input text column and country is the category column. In multi-class multi-label text, uh, we have uh, one input text column and multiple category columns. <clears throat> Here common text is the input text column and rest all are the uh, multiple categories. Here uh, zero uh, indicates absence of the category and one indicates uh, presence of that category in the input text. Uh, now uh, let's create the model. Uh, first we'll do the necessary inputs. Then we'll uh, prepare the data, we'll call prepare text data, pass it the input text file, input train data file. Then we can call show batch to inspect the loaded data. So in this notebook, uh, we will be training a model to uh, classify addresses into their corresponding countries. So we can see that uh, these addresses have countries missing in them. And we will, uh, the model will attempt to classify them into their corresponding countries. Uh, so in order to create the model, uh, let's look at models uh, backbone selection first. So we can call supported backbones and see all the available backbones. Then uh, we can, uh, after selecting a particular backbone, we can see what all pre-trained models are available for that backbone. Uh, one important uh, thing to note here while selecting a pre-trained model is that uh, it is preferable to select a model that has been trained on the similar data uh, and similar objective that you are uh, training the model for. Uh, for example, here uh, we have addresses in multiple languages. Uh, we have address in French, in Spanish, and uh, we have chosen XLM Roberta base model, which we know has been trained on a text corpus of around 100 languages. So uh, we can expect the model to train well for our task. 
so uh, it has the usual uh, model workflow for training first we call lr find find the optimum learning rate then we use the learning rate and train it for a few epochs keep monitoring the accuracy then uh, to squeeze more performance we unfreeze the model train it further and now we can see that we have a uh, 98% accuracy and it's saturating now. So uh, we can now, after training the model, we can also evaluate the performance by calling accuracy and metrics per label methods. Then once we have trained and evaluated the model, we can uh, validate the model visually by calling show results. It will return the uh, target and the predicted labels on validation data. And here we can see that our targets and prediction are matching in all these samples. So we know that the model is performing well. Then after being trained, the model can be used for inference. Uh, here we are passing an input address to the model and the model is uh, uh, returning uh, Spain as the country along with a confidence score of 99%. Then uh, finally, we can save the model to the disk for a later use or for further training of the model. Uh, so let's see how we can use a text classifier as a web service using AWS Lambda in containers. So this is a public uh, image that we have published to AWS uh, image registry. Uh, you could download this image and publish it to your own private repository, private registry, and then we can go and create a Lambda function. We'll choose container image. We'll choose our, we will select a name. Then we will choose our, our repository. This is my private repository. And this is the image that is there. Now after that, we will select a uh, user which has uh, read and write access to S3 buckets and we'll create the function. Now uh, let's, once the function is created, let's create the API. So this is our API trigger. Let's create a REST API, create a new one and do that. And we're keeping the security open for now. Now uh, we will make a few settings. We will set environment variable for transformer cache location for the uh, config files to be stored. And we will set it as temp as that is the only writable location. After that, we will also set the timeout and memory for the Lambda function. We will use 1024 MBs of memory, set that and we will select one minute as timeout. After that, we can copy the API and gateway endpoint, go to the postman application to test the API. That's my API endpoint. Now let's add model ID. Uh, the model ID is uh, the item ID of the ArcGIS online. That item is a published address classification model. Let's paste it here. Then we will take few addresses. We will uh, try to classify with the API. And that will go as a text list. That's my address one. Let's take another one and yeah. And we will separate these with a uh, forward slash. Then we will uh, provide an S3 bucket where the model will be cached. Uh, my S3 bucket is ArcGIS learn models. And now let's test it. Uh, we can see that uh, addresses have been classified to their corresponding countries and we also have the scores for the confidence. So uh, this is how we can use text classifier as a web service using Now uh, let's head back to the presentation. And look at the next model that is sequence to sequence model. 
this again has been newly added to the 1.8.3 release. Uh, let's jump to the notebook. So uh, sequence to sequence uh, is a is a kind of model that forms a translation of input sequence uh, to output sequence. And uh, one characteristic of this translation is that the uh, output sequence length is independent of the input sequence length. So you could input a hundred word document to the model and can uh, it can generate just a five word output or a 10 word output. Uh, the length is independent of the input sequence. Uh, because of its uh, this nature, it can support a multitude of tasks like question answering, summarization, translation, and many more. Uh, let's look at uh, the supported label data formats. So uh, this model uh, accepts training data in CSV format, and uh, the CSV uh, must have one input text column and one output translated text column. Uh, here, the non-standard address is our input text column and the standard address, address is our uh, translated output text column. Uh, in this notebook, uh, we are uh, training a model for uh, uh, translating an input non-standard erroneous address uh, to standard and correct address. So, for example, here, uh, let's take a look at uh, this example. Here, Avenue has been uh, translated to AVE, which is a standard abbreviation for that. And uh, North has been translated to N and so on. Uh, the corrections have been made and standardizations have been made. Uh, now let's start creating the model. Uh, first, we'll do the import. Then we will prepare the data. Uh, we'll call prepare text data and point it to the uh, training file and we can call show batch and then again we choose the supported backbone uh, first we see what all available backbones are there so we have these three for sequence sequence models then after we have selected a backbone we can uh, choose a pre-trained model now let's create the model by passing data and uh, selected model then we call lr find find an optimum learning rate, train the model, uh, then we unfreeze it to train it further. We are calling, after unfreezing, we're calling LR fine again, and then fitting the model further on the newly found learning rate. And we see that the blue score here is starting to get saturated. Uh, blue score is uh, a metric of how uh, well our translation is performing. Then once the model has been trained, we can uh, call show results to visually inspect the results. Uh, so this is our uh, input text. This was the target translation and this is the uh, model prediction. Then uh, after training, we can also call uh, get model metrics to see the uh, model metrics on validation data. And after the model has been trained, we can uh, save it to the disk by calling model.save. Uh, let's look at the inferencing part. So we can call uh, model.predict to inference on uh, new data. So here we are passing it a text list of three addresses. And the model is uh, taking one input address and translating it to standard address. So here north becomes N. Here south was misspelled, it becomes S. Rhode Island was missing a space. It was corrected and here Massachusetts was misspelled and it was uh, corrected by the model. So we can see the model is uh, performing well at uh, the task of standardization correction. Yeah, and uh, with this, uh, it concludes a small overview of uh, sequence sequence model within Python API. Uh, now we will uh, move on to the inference only models. Uh, so we have multiple inference only models added uh, to the uh, 1.8.3 release uh, and these models do not need any training. We can just uh, uh, use them out of the box. So let's look at a notebook uh, showcasing some of these uh, models. 
so we can uh, first of all just import the model uh, here we are importing all the six uh, inference only models from arcgis.learn.txt first let's just understand what zero shot classifier is a uh, zero shot classifier is a transformer based model uh, that has been trained on a uh, natural language inferencing task and is capable of generalizing to the test time labels passed to it even though it has uh, not seen those labels in uh, training time so here uh, we will uh, it's very straightforward we'll just call the constructor of zero shot classifier we will take a sequence uh, have uh, multiple labels the candidate labels and we can call a predict method pass it the sequence and the candidate labels so here our input sequence was who are you voting for in 2020 and the candidate labels were politics public health economics democracy and we can see that uh, for politics the score has been uh, is uh, 0.87 and uh, for others the score is low so we can see that uh, the text was correctly categorized a uh, zero shot classifier can also uh, do multi-label classification we just have to uh, pass multi-class equals to true and uh, it will uh, classify the input text in multiple categories uh, it can also uh, support multilingual data as the pre-trained model was trained on uh, 15 different languages so we can pass it uh, an input text in a different language and it can still classify that uh, the other models that have been added are question answering, uh, summarization, text generation, fill mask, and translation. Uh, uh, these can be, uh, how to use these can be found on the Python API reference guide. And it's pretty straightforward, uh, just like the easier short classifier. Uh, now, uh, let's uh, look at the translation uh, model and how we can use it to translate a story map. Now, uh, let's just see how we can use text translator to translate a Spanish story map into an English story map. Uh, first, we will do the necessary imports. Then we will create a GIS object pointing to my organization. Then we will read the story map by passing the item ID. And uh, after reading it, we can uh, display the story map on the notebook. Uh, now uh, we can see that the story map is in Spanish language. And now we will create a translator model uh, by calling test translator, passing it the source and target language, Spanish to English. And this function, uh, translate function, calls uses the translator and uh, translate all the text elements one by one uh, present in the story map the replace method uh, goes to every key of the json and fetches the text element and translates it now uh, we will uh, get the data of the story map into sm data object and then we will call replace method and pass it all the uh, keys in the JSON that has text elements in them. And we'll pass the translate method. After the uh, translation is complete, we will uh, get a JSON with all the text elements replaced. Uh, we store that in uh, result. Uh, the translation takes a while. It uh, must be complete right about now, yeah. So once it has been translated, we will uh, create a GIS pointing again to my organization. Now here we are uh, cloning the uh, original story map to my organization. Uh, just uh, mind it that it still has uh, Spanish text in it. Uh, once uh, the item has been cloned, uh, we can update uh, the text with the uh, translated JSON and we can also update other attributes by translating them. Uh, 
now the update is done we will uh, share the cloned item and display it on the notebook so this is the translated english story map let's open it in a new tab all right so here is our story map it is now in english you can see that uh, the story map is identical to the spanish one but all the text has been translated to english with this we can see how easy it is to translate uh, story maps using a uh, text translator that is an inference only model we have now concluded an overview of uh, what all has been added and updated in the latest release of the python api which is going live today and for a deeper understanding of the newly added models uh, you can visit the developers website and go to the guide section and if you want to see more examples of these newly added models you can go to the sample notebook section and if you want to see uh, the latest development on these sample notebooks and want to see the samples that haven't been published to the public website yet you can visit the uh, arcgis python api repo uh, and go to the samples and guides folder and see the unpublished samples and guides there uh, with that i would like to hand it back to amy for q and a thank you thank you akil we're now going to begin answering the questions submitted during today's presentation we've received quite a few and we will try to get through as many as possible but whatever we do not get to today, we will address in a GeoNet blog post after this webinar. As a reminder, you can still submit questions through the questions pane in your attendee control panel. Our first question is, can I identify street signs and OCR them? Yeah, so you can identify street signs uh, using any of the object detection models that we have which are SSD, Retina Net, Faster RCN, or Riolo. You can train uh, your model on one of these. And after you have trained, you can use any open source library like PyTessa React to do a OCR and extract out text or any other characters that you want. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Our next question is, is this API available for Linux, the Linux environment to work directly in Jupyter Notebook? Yes, this API is completely supported uh, on Linux, and we have thoroughly tested that on Linux environments. Okay, perfect, thank you. Is ArcGIS providing a GPU for training models? Yes, we do provide in ArcGIS online notebooks. If you select advanced runtime, you can select, uh, you can select GPU over there and you can uh do your analysis or you can train your models there as well all right thank you will some training be written so we can go through this step by step yes uh akhil has as akhil mentioned we do have sample notebooks uh, which which goes over each of the models that we showed today if they're not on the public website we do have it on the github repository uh, and you can just uh, like visit that repository anytime and you will find the latest updated notebooks of each of for each of the model yeah all right great thanks was the coordinate system matched between the imagery and python operators so the vectors match yes uh, the coordinates are matched this is because of the tight integration provided by arcgis platform so when when we inference using arcgis it takes care of where to put all the features that we have received in object detection models so yeah the coordinate systems are matched all right perfect um will this notebook be available as a tutorial yep all right as i mentioned they are available in sample notebooks in the arcgis python api github repository uh yeah okay and if we can um yeah we do have that resources slide right mm -hmm. yes we do 
All right, for our next question, where is the new dashboard module in the API? Uh, so it's available in arcgis.apps.dashboard. Uh, and if you, yeah, so you'll be able to find them in the uh, docu docs when they're released. So uh, they are gonna be released very soon. Uh, so just uh, keep eye and you'll see all the documentation for dashboards. Yeah. Okay. Um, is it possible to find a sample notebooks for picks to picks change detection and road extraction models? Yes, they all will be added very soon in the GitHub repository. All right. How can I access scanned map digitizer tool? Can you give more information about this tool or class? Uh, there is a guide that is available on the GitHub repository for scanned map digitizer. So all of these, whenever I say GitHub repository, it is GitHub. It is the second. Uh, it is the first in the second links in the resources section. So uh, no, I I mean the fourth link, which says GitHub.com slash sri slash arcgis python api. So there are two folders in them. One is guide and one is samples. So if you go into guides, you will find the scanned map digitizer guide and you will be able to uh, know about more about them. And for every other thing, you have uh, a sample and you can find documentation in either one of these folders, yeah. All right, what is the model backbone? Yeah, so uh, I'll take that one, the model backbone. So the back back architecture, the uh, let's say we are working with sequence sequence models, so we can work with different architectures. One could be a model based on Spacey uh, library that is a text-based CNN. So when we are choosing Spacey backbone, we are uh, choosing that architecture, and when we are uh, choosing a transformer backbone, we are choosing a transformer-based architecture and just putting a head on top top of that. So the features are extracted by the backbone and the head just do the classification uh, for the particular task that we are handling. So we have multiple backbones as options to choose and uh, we can always uh, call dot backbone uh, on the class and we will see the available backbones that are available to choose. Okay, thank you. In addition to intensity, um, number of returns, XYZ in point clouds. Can we use RGB also? Yes, uh, we do provide the support for RGB. So uh, during the export of your data, if you set, uh, if you s in the extra features, there's a parameter called extra features and it's a list. And if you passed, pass RGB in that or either R or G or B, you will be able to export them and you'll, the model will be trained on them as well. So you can use any combination. You can use R and G, you can use G and B. So yeah, we can do that. So let me, uh, yeah. Okay, did you wanna go ahead and show something Divyansh? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I saw that there's, um, there's a question uh, how to install ArcGIS latest version. So as you can see, the latest ArcGIS, ArcGIS version has been released on Conda channel. It is v1.8.3 and you can install that using this single command and it will install all the dependencies and all the, um, and everything that you need to run on your models, both on Linux and on Windows. Uh, yeah, and there is a complete guide on here uh, in the same GitHub repository that I mentioned, which you can use. Again, it highlights how to install this. And uh, this repository is the go-to place whenever you want to learn something and whenever you want sample notebooks or guides, all the samples are present here. So if you go into, GIS analyst and data scientist, you will see the uh, road extraction demo, the pix-to-pix -pix demo, uh, pix-to-pix -sam pix -pix sample, uh, and many other things. So everything you will 
you want is present here and here is the guides guide uh, and if you go into deep learning you will see how these all of these models are working and how to use them how to what are the options available in the api yeah yeah that's what i wanted to share okay great um can we create custom models for our use case Mm, absolutely. Yeah, we absolutely can create custom models. Uh, we just need to uh, feed them the data that we want uh, the model to do, uh, depending on the task, obviously. Uh, so be it uh, text models, be it imagery models, we can always create custom models. And for uh, pre-cooked models, we are uh, coming up with the ready-to-use models that will be available live uh, Atlas. Uh, so living Atlas. So those pre-trained models can be downloaded there. Otherwise, we can definitely train uh, custom models here. And if you are uh, asking whether you can have a custom model on a different task totally, um, that is uh, not present. But by custom model, if you mean you, you want to train on your own data, that you can do. OK. Um, can the language training be used with text that is heavily abbreviated? For example, weather text. Yes, it can be. Uh, so uh, depending on the training data, it should be able to train patterns from the abbreviated data as well. And uh, the tokenizers that uh, are coming up these days are not word based. So they take sub word entities as well. So uh, they should be uh, they should be able to train well on abbreviations as well like in the sequence sequence example what we were trying to do was we were trying to uh, get the uh, complete word to be converted to a standard abbreviation we can go the other way around as well okay and for our last question is it possible to use the world imagery service or other wmts to export training data and to detect objects in a chosen in 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 a chosen area of these. Um, uh, as far as I know, we cannot do that. Uh, we cannot use world imagery. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, but uh, we can of course follow up on this, and we can. Uh, yeah, we we cannot use world imagery, but we can. You can use your own WT, WMTS server if you have. But uh, the best way to inference or do do export is to use your own imagery or any other free imageries that are available. All right. Well, thank you, Divyansh. Thank you, Akil, and thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. If you have any other questions, please contact me using my email address in your follow-up email. Once you leave today's webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation, and we would appreciate it if you would complete that and provide your feedback. We will be providing a recording of this presentation, which we will be available. It will be available within 7 to 10 business days on the go.esri.com slash geodev page. On behalf of Esri and our presenters today, thank you for joining us and have a great rest of your day.